fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. It would take a whole shelf full of spices and special flavorings if your mom started out to make a honey spice on her own, and lots of extra work, too. But with Betty Crocker's wonderful honey spice cake mix, Everything she needs is right there in the package, all blended and ready to go. All she has to do is add water and two fresh eggs. Mmm, and what a cake. Why, a great big Betty Crocker honey spice cake disappears in nothing flat around our house. You just can't stop eating it. And I know once your family finds out how good Betty Crocker honey spice cake is, they'll make quick work of everyone your mom turns out. But she won't mind. They're quick work for her, too. So easy to bake, and they always turn out perfect. Betty Crocker promises that. So have Mom put Betty Crocker honey spice cake on her grocery list today, huh? You'll be glad she did, and so will your whole family. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you Silver? Hooray! Prospector Davy Fletcher, white-haired and weather-beaten, used short, frenzied strokes as he chopped at the wall of the cave. Otto, look at that vein, will you? Look at it. It's all gold, solid all the way. Look at it! His partner, Otto Johnson, wiped the cold perspiration from his florid face and tried not to show the excitement that shone in his mild blue eyes. Davy, I, I'm looking. We're rich. After all these years, we've <laughs> stuck it rich. <laughs> Outside the cave, more than an hour later, Otto Johnson prepared to leave for Dorado City. Davy Fletcher squinted at the sun and frowned. The sun's starting on the down path, Otto. Better hustle if you're going to get to town and file that claim before sundown. I'll go as fast as Wilhelm will take me, Davy. Don't worry, I'll be back. Are you ready, Wilhelm? Now, come on, then. We go to town and get rich. Lone Ranger and Toto had camped in a thickly wooded section near the main trail into Dorado City. Toto was looking down on the trail before taking off for the town himself. Himasabi, that man down on trail have bad time with donkey. I think maybe... Uh, let me have those field glasses, will you please, Toto? Oh, thank you. The Lone Ranger peered through his glasses and studied the man and beast limping along the trail. Yes, I thought that figure looked familiar. Toto Johnson. Oh, me know him. Him man who dig for gold always, and find nothing always. <laughs> That's Otto, all right. I imagine he and his partner, Davy Fletcher, have chased more rainbows than any other prospectors in these parts. And donkey seem to have bad foot. Me think maybe... We might help. <laughs> no, I doubt it, Otto. Otto Johnson is a kind-hearted man. He wouldn't have taken the beast on the trail if it were seriously hurt. Ah, see... He's resting it now and tending its hoof. Ah. And me take back trail to town, then. Oh, Tonto. Uh, steady. Yes, Kimasabi. Tonto, while you're in town, I think it might be a good idea to do some more checking on Jack Cooper. Now, me think same thing, Kimasabi. Now you say I be good, me do it, sure. The Radio City was becoming one of the most thriving cities in the West until Cooper and his men moved in. Now it's plenty bad town. Yes, it's becoming one of the worst. 
Even with a sheriff as honest and fearless as Lofty Logan. Sheriff? Him go to San Felipe for prisoner. Yes, you told me that yesterday, Tonto. Easy, Scout. Easy, Tonto. <laughs> Steady, Scout. Steady. Uh, me get back late, Kimisabi. Get off, Scout! The registration office and the say office were both closed when Otto Johnson arrived in Dorado City that evening. He placed Wilhelm, the donkey, in a veterinarian's care. And now, late that night, he walked along the street. Yeah, I should be celebrating, and instead I must walk the streets alone. His lips were firm, and his eyes looked straight ahead. But after a while, his steps wavered, and almost instinctively led him into Diamond Jack Cooper's cafe. Two hours passed. Diamond Jack Cooper's lieutenant, Pinto Wilson, sat in the closed office with his boss. From time to time, they glanced at the small nuggets of pure gold on the table as they listened to Blackie Hample's story. Finally, the bartender reached his climax. That old Johnson got so oiled up, he finally told me everything. Where they found the gold and how Davy Fletcher's waiting back there at the cave now, guarding the place till Otto files a claim. Otto's not going to file a claim, boys. You know that. (laughs) I guessed at it, boss. As soon as he told me he was too late to do it today. That's when I put those knockout drops in his drink. Dragged him into the barrel room. Pinto helped me. That's right, boss. He's in there now, dead to the world. Who saw you drag him in there? Just a few boys here in the bar where he was standing. Our boys, boss. No outsiders. But how are you... Hey, who's that? Hey. Why'd you run out here? Who'd you see? Nobody now. I could have sworn, though, I saw somebody at the window while we was talking. Well, where is he? I don't know. Only one I see is that engine across the road, leaning against the hitching post. We're seeing things, Pino. Come on back inside and tell the boss. He's going to be sore. <laughs> Toto, who had been lounging against the hitching post, waited for about five minutes. Then he moved with unbelievable swiftness. He sped across the street, blended magically into the shadows, and walked almost noiselessly to a spot beneath the window in Diamond Jack Cooper's office. Inside, Blackie Hample returned from the barrel room, where he had emptied the pockets of the still unconscious Otto Johnson. Now, Blackie, give us Johnson's map, the one he was going to use for filing this claim. Show Pinto the spot where that cave is located. Pinto studied the map closely and put it aside after a few minutes. Oh, here. Here's Otto's gun, Pinto. You want him to use this to kill Davy, don't you, boss? Sure. We gotta have that as part of the evidence to hang the fat fella in the morning. A forty-five, huh? Get a nice feel of it. Pinto, remember what I told you. Without your gun, you go into that cave where Fletcher is. He's got to believe your story. Get him away from there before you kill him. Now, let's get it straight from first to last. While you're taking the trail to Davy Fletcher Pinto, Blackie will sneak out of out of the barrel. Seconds after Jack Cooper had repeated his plans to Pinto and Blackie, the shadows draping the rear of his cafe melted, and the form of an Indian emerged. He sped to the end of the street, dashed into a clearing among some trees, and vaulted onto his horse. Scout. Then he turned the horse toward the trail that led into the hills. Get him up, Scout! Otto galloped back to the spot overlooking the trail where the Lone Ranger was camped. The masked man listened grimly as his Indian companion finished the plot he had overheard outside Diamond Jack Cooper's window. So Cooper is going to have Davy Fletcher killed, huh? And in the morning he's going to incite a mob to hang Johnson before Sheriff Logan gets back to town? That plan he make, Kimasabi. You say the gun Pinto is going to use to kill Davy, uh, Otto Johnson's gun, is a forty-five? Ah, me hear him say that. And me see gun through window. Good. Then let's make some plans of our own. Tonto, uh, there are still forty fives among those blanks we have in my kit. Uh, yes, Kimasabi. Me sure. And me get them. Tonto picked up a large leather pouch resting against a tree near the horses. He opened the kit in the light of the dying fire on the ground. Then he withdrew an assortment of bullets, selecting six of the same caliber. Here, blank bullet you want. Oh, thank you. Tonto, Jack Cooper can't be exposed unless Davy Fletcher is shot. 
We can't let that happen. But we want to get Cooper dead to rights. Now, we'll try to arrange things so Fletcher is shot with blank cartridges. Our problem will be to get those blanks into Cooper's gun and let Fletcher know what we're doing. Tonto, do you think I can find the cave where Fletcher's hiding? It's not far from here, Kimasabi. You come to Brook, like me say. You find cave easy. All right, I'll set out once then. Now, you keep those bullets, Tonto. Watch for this Pino Wilson on the main trail. Ah, me follow, Kimasabi. And do like you say. Be sure you remain near the spot where he intends to kill Fletcher. You've got to scare him away before he investigates his work. Me know. Me do it. Good. And I'll get going with the Ridge Trail and ride to Davy Fletcher. Easy, steady, big fella. All right, big fella. Come on, there. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When Bill's at bat, the kids all shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh, toasted oat flavor. And listen, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger found Davy Fletcher in the cave. The bewildered prospector was dubious at first, but as the Lone Ranger outlined the plot against Fletcher's life, the old man became convinced. Well, stranger, it sounds mighty peculiar what you just told me, but if Pinto Wilson's mixed up in it like you say, it, it could be true. He's a bad one. So if he comes here like you say he will, I'll do just what you told me. I'll make believe I know what to From a path above running parallel with the main trail, Tonto had followed Pinto Wilson from the moment the bad man passed below the Lone Ranger's encampment. Steady, Scout, steady, but I... Let me turn you here for a while. Tonto dismounted and watched Wilson in a clearing near the brook that crossed the trail at that point. The man removed his gun holster and placed it on a tree stump. Then he mounted his horse again and rode upward, following the path of the brook. Holding six forty-five caliber bullets in his hand... Toto started down the embankment to the tree stump and the gun which Wilson had left in the holster there. There, he removed the bullets from Pinto's gun and replaced them with the blanks. Oh, oh, oh. A short time later, leaving his horse outside, Pinto Wilson, his clothes disarranged, and pretending great stress and fear, staggered into the cave. The Lone Ranger had left for Dorado City a short time before, but it was a secretly confident Dave Fletcher who reacted to Pinto's performance. Who's that there? Huh? You, get your hands up. Pinto's voice held an exaggerated tremor. Now, don't shoot. Don't shoot, Davy. Uh, I've come for you. Otto sent me to bring you to him. Pinto, intent on his role, was unconscious of how readily Davy Fletcher sided in with him. Davy placed his gun in his pocket and went up to the man anxiously. Otto sent you? Otto... Mister, has something happened to Otto? Well, don't stand there. Tell me. I, uh, he's been shot, Davy. Now, look, I, I got my horse outside. I'll take it to him. It's not too far. A couple of miles from here along the brook. Then let's get to him, mister. Let, let's get to him. Yeah. Come on, will you? Hurry. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. Pinto Wilson and Davy Fletcher dismounted on the trail. Pinto, forging ahead about ten feet, led the way to the spot where his gun holster lay on the tree stump. He snatched the gun from the leather as Davy, following the Lone Ranger's advice, remained four or five strides behind. Where's Otto? 
I don't see Otto. Pinto Wilson turned quickly, his gun pointing at Davy. You said that. Betsy, you're not going to see Otto. You're going to die. Davy turned and started to run away from the trail. Hey, you won't get away, Davy. Davy Fletcher pretended to stumble as he saw a horse against the night sky a hundred yards away. Don't, don't shoot me. Pinto stopped and fired point blank at the prospector. What a prize sucker you are. I'm dying. As Davy fell to the ground, Pinto saw the horse in the distance. There was an Indian riding it. You're gone. It. Quickly, he turned and ran to the tree stump. He picked up the holster. Then, carrying Matt and the empty gun, he ran to the trail and leaped on Easy his horse. Boy. Get going, boy. We gotta get out of here. Get up, boy. Come on. Get up. Pinto Wilson, panicked, he streaked his horse toward Dorado City. The Lone Ranger, on arriving in Dorado City, had found Jack Cooper's cafe and let himself in a side door. When the place had closed, he sought out the barrel room where Otto Johnson was held captive. At daybreak, he leaped behind one of the barrels when a key was heard in the lock on the door. Blackie smirked as he saw Otto move slightly. <laughs> Coming too, huh? Good. I can make a walk out into the woods then before people get stunned. Stand up. I said stand up. <laughs> Going out in the woods and do some waiting. I'll be waiting with you, Blackie. What the? Drop that gun. Oh. Drop it quick or I'll... Look, Strange, I, I'm not a gunman. I, I don't like guns. Whatever you say. I... I say help Otto off the floor. And take him where you're supposed to take him. Oh, sure. Sure, I'll do that. And I'll tell you there what I want you to do. And if you don't... But go on. Go with him, Otto. Yeah. The two men, one trembling, the other dizzy, staggered out the door into the street, a street completely deserted and still enveloped in the gray blanket of morning. As the two men headed for the woods, the lone ranger, proceeding cautiously, was never far behind. Pinto Wilson, aided by members of Cooper's gang, had swept through the town with a story of wanton killing. Now, as the sun came up in the sky... The angry mob was listening to Pinto speak from the porch of a Main Street building. And then, as if it had been planned, Pinto Wilson looked toward the edge of the woods and saw an undoubtedly semi-conscious Otto Johnson staggering toward them. Now look! Look, there's Johnson! There's the killer now! There's the one who shot Davy Fletcher in cold blood without giving him a chance! Go on, grab him! Go on, get him! Spurred on, the mob set off to grab Otto Johnson. Cooper watched them rush at Otto, who stood shaking beneath a tree. Then, puzzled, he turned to the triumphant Pinto Wilson. Where's Blackie? I thought Blackie was supposed to make believe he found him. It doesn't matter, boss. Look, they've got Johnson. Come on, let's be there while they string him. <laughs> the fool fool doesn't even know what's happening. Yeah, let's go. The Cooper-led mob stood around Otto Johnson, whose terror was now real. He dropped the mask of grogginess and started to protest. Oh, please! Please, you must let me talk! Please, you must let me! This is an awful thing you would do to an innocent man! Innocent? I saw you shoot Davy Fletcher! I saw you... You saw that, Pinto Wilson? Yeah, and don't try to deny it. Well, I'll deny it! The crowd turned in dumb surprise as they heard the voice of Davy Fletcher. He stood on a barrel between a masked man and an Indian. Look, it's Davy Fletcher. He's not dead. That's Fletcher. Yes, I'm Davy Fletcher, all right. And it wasn't Otto who emptied his gun at me. It was him. Pinto Wilson. That's a lie. I didn't. Pinto, you fool. What did you do? Yep, he tried to kill me so as he could blame it on Otto. But why? I'll tell you why. So as Diamond Jack Cooper could steal the mine me and Otto located in the hills. Cooper? What? Cooper did this? Sure. Hey, look at him. Otto joined in the accusation. That is true. This bartender, Blackie Hempel, took me and held me prisoner in Cooper's cafe. That's a lie. These men no, are... No, it's not a lie, Cooper. You did. It's what you've done before in the past. Robbing honest men, stealing their claims. Who are you? A liar, a man and a man. I'll get him for... The ranger's gun shot Pinto's wrist before he could pull the trigger of his revolver. And you keep your hands free, too, Cooper. Don't make move for gun. Hey, look, right in this way, Lofty Logan. The sheriff. Yes, and his deputies. Let them listen while I tell you all you need to know. Blackie Hample will confirm everything I say. Blackie Hample? Yes, won't you, Blackie? The ranger fingered his gun as Blackie slunk from behind the great horse, Silver. Sheriff, arrest this man. 
Arrest him! Sheriff Lofty Logan studied the scene, motioned his deputies mildly, and smiled coldly at Cooper. No, I won't, Cooper. I want to hear what the stranger has to say. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Sheriff. The Lone Ranger told the entire plot against the lives and property of Davy Fletcher and Otto Johnson. Then he enumerated previous unsolved murders and crimes traceable to Diamond Jack Cooper. He backed up his horse as he ended. All the things I've told you can be proved by Fletcher and Johnson and Blackie Hample. Is that true, Hample? You testify in court against Cooper? Well, I guess, yes, Sheriff. I'll prove stuff, too. Oh, no, you won't. Hey, watch out. Cooper's going to shoot that. Oh. Hey, hit Cooper. The masked man did it again. Grab Cooper, boy. All right, now. Stand back, everybody. All right, deputies will arrest those men. All right, men. Arrest Cooper when you banish his wrist. Arrest Pinto Wilson and everyone else who joined in that lynch mob. As the deputies arrested Cooper, Pinto, and the gang... Otto Johnson joined Davy Fletcher, who was telling his story to Sheriff Logan. Yes, sir, and the only reason I didn't die was because the masked man's friend put blank bullets in the gun Pinto used to shoot me. That was the trick that saved us and made all this possible. Oh, uh, thanks to that man who wears the mask, him and that engine. Sheriff, you, you let him talk there before and didn't even try to stop him. Did you know who he was? Why, of course. I wanted to hear the truth he was bound to bring out. He's disappeared now. Otto, do you mean to say you didn't know who that man was? No, should I? He saved your life, didn't he? Yeah. Of course you should. That's the Lone Ranger. I'll see you. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.